Uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of really difficult slash annoying challenges lately. I think I need a little break from all that. So today, I'm going to not torture myself and do something that, at least I think, will be relatively easy and enjoyable. A nice, simple, Jewel 5 mission. With one simple twist. Instead of launching from Kerbin, I'll be starting on... Jewel? Huh? Yes, really. Courtesy of a mod that I've been wanting to try out for ages now. Alien Space Programs, which is a mod that essentially allows you to move the KSC to a whole bunch of different celestial bodies besides Kerbin. You can start on Eve for the bold, Duna for the casuals, the moon, Minmus, Therese, Leif, Tylo, and yes, even Jewel, aka Realism Overhaul Light. The mod, however, is a little easier on you, as it places the KSC on a giant floating plateau, dubbed the Pillars of Meander, at an altitude of more than 70 kilometers, where the atmosphere pressure isn't too ridiculous. Alright, enough admiring the aggressively green landscape, let's actually get to building our spacecraft. Allow me to introduce to you Misery 1, which is like a really watered-down and miserable Discovery 1. No sentient AI on board, though. <laughs> Unless... I'm sorry, Dave. It's got a relatively simple design, featuring a central core of three nuclear engines, which is further fed by three drop tanks, giving it a rather outlandish amount of Delta V. I'm sure I didn't overbuild it in the slightest, right? Moving on, we have our lander, Draggy McDragington, called that because any Leif lander that isn't an SSTO pretty much always ends up producing way too much drag, even when you try to minimize it as best you can. In addition to the main lander, it's also got a lower stage to help it land on Tylo, which I believe actually makes this the first time I've ever done a Jewel 5 with only one lander. How on earth have I never done that before? Anyways, let's launch already! Once the Misery One was in orbit, Draggy McDragington quickly followed suit, with a couple of hiccups. Oh no! Yeah, despite doing gymnastics on its way up, Draggy McDragington still made it into orbit with fumes. Oh, that was close. I then performed the rendezvous, nice. where I realized I made another silly mistake, no decoupler between the RCS tug and the upper stage, and no probe control because Jewel doesn't have a deep space network. Luckily, Jogard Kerman was more than happy to sort that out for us. Following these blunders, the docking was completed, and we set off for our first target. Late uh, Tylo. Yeah, I'm skipping Lathe for now and going to Tylo first in order to get rid of the ballast. But not without using a Lathe gravity assist and getting mildly frustrated because the map view screen refused to show that I had a Tylo encounter until I was already on a collision course with it, making me waste exactly 69 meters per second of delta V to correct it. Now, dear viewer, do you notice anything a little bit strange about Tylo? Almost like it has something that, you know, it's not supposed to have, like an atmosphere? Well, it turns out that Scatterer broke, and it accidentally gave Tylo atmospheric shaders, resulting in it bearing a striking resemblance to an alternate version of itself that we will not mention, and also making it look really cool in my opinion. After undocking the lander and threading the needle enough to give even Jeb a heart attack, we began the descent. Wait, I forgot to detach the drop tanks. <clears throat> atmosphere or no atmosphere, we landed safely, planted a rather 
interesting flag. Played some golf. Nice shot! And before Jogard Kerman knew it, we lifted off back into orbit again. Which took ages because of the perfectly reasonable, not annoying at all, time warp altitude limits. I love this riveting gameplay. Two thousand years later. And once that had been completed, next on the itinerary was to go back to Leif. Just after leaving Tylo, however, the Planet Shine mod made everything, everything is chrome. chrome? In the after a quick orbital insertion at Leif, we made several arrow breaking passes. During one of which, Theokas Kerman thought it would be a great idea to go EVA at the last second to get science, which was nearly... lethal. Eventually, though, we reached low orbit and prepared to land. But first, Tom Kerman had to swap out the lander's docking port for a parachute. Uh, actually twice, because I forgot to fuel up the lander. <sighs> Before landing successfully and having the landing legs behave like it was a slip and slide on the 4th of July. After this, we planted another flag and lifted off again, where Draggy McDraggington truly lived up to its name. Seriously though, Leif's upper atmosphere is terribly modeled. It's way denser at higher altitudes than it should be, resulting in us just barely being able to make a rendezvous by the skin of our teeth. And from there, it was off to the easy moons, starting with Val, where I almost forgot to refuel again, but otherwise landed just fine with minimal issues, and more bad puns. Ascent also took a while because of the perfectly reasonable, not annoying at all. Next in line was the home of everyone's favorite deep space kraken, Bop, which was annoying to get an encounter with, to say the least. At least until the wigged Tylo gave us a helping hand. Why are you bullying me? The landing on Bop itself was very uneventful, unless you count the spatial anomaly. And the seismic event that occurred in the distance while Theokas Kerman was there. And following that, it was off to Paul, where, quite frankly, I realized that I'd way over-engineered the Misery 1, as I still had something like 3 Bruh. kilometers per second of Delta V left. Ah well. Tom Kerman then used the Draggy McDraggington for the final time, and, once on the surface of Paul, I tried out something that I had no idea you could actually even do in this game. Collect rocks. What? I've had breaking ground since its release, and I never even knew this was a thing. Just think of the rock collection I could have had by now. Anyways, once Tom had done his thing on Paul, and not hit any of Paul's trademark invisible terrain, he ascended back into orbit and docked with the Misery 1, before the lander was detached and left in Paul orbit. Okay, cool. Now that that's all done, let's get back to Kerbin- uh, I'm just kidding. Back to Jewel. Sure, I didn't overbuild it in the slightest, right? Alright, maybe I did not, as I had to use up all of the remaining fuel just to be going slow enough to not just burn up in the atmosphere, as I had rather foolishly taken half the ablator out of the heat shield because, well, on Kerbin you almost never need all of it. Yes, Hef, that is correct, but guess what? This isn't Kerbin, you absolute moron! After a truly nail-biting first pass, and a secondary pass with the already spent heat shield, the Misery One safely descended towards the KSC Plateau, 
100% planned, definitely real. And after landing on the side and almost tumbling down to our deaths, we safely recover the craft. And there you have it, folks. A Jewel 5 starting on Jewel. Hope you enjoyed this slightly shorter and less edited video, which is pretty much what my videos are gonna be as long as I'm working on In the Shadow of Bob, which I presumably will be for the next few months. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!